ایرانیان پرتلاش و موفق امریکایی باعث شدن که یک بار دیگه تلویزیون پی بی اس به فکر این بیفته که فیلمی در ارتباط با ایرانیا تهیه بکنه و این فیلم به نام The Iranian Americans قرار هستش که به زودی از شبکه پی بی اس پخش بشه به همین دلیل من به اتفاق همکارانم از هلو هالیوود اومدیم به شبکه پی بی اس و پس از مدتی باعث شد که من بیام جلو دوربین تقریبا بعد از دو سال اومدم جلو دوربین تا اینکه بتونیم این گزارش ویژه براتون پخش بکنیم علی برغی همکار اون سلام تو هستی علی برغی خیلی علاقه داره دوستان عزیز که به مسائل اجتماعی و سیاسی بپردازه علی جان قرار است با چه کسایی امروز اینجا مصاحبه بکنیم با میس چاتم و میس راجرز میس راجرز مسئول چی است میس راجرز سی او هستش و میس چاتم کوچرمن هست کوچرمن پی بی اس پی بی اس هستن میخوایم بریم به شبکه پی بی اس جایی که تلویزیونی که خیلی از ایرانی‌ها تماشاگر هستن و بارها بارها و فیلم های داکیومنتری مختلفی تهیه کردن برای کشورهای مختلف و از جمله ما ایرانی ها خب بریم به شبکه پی بی اس هلو هالیوود هلو ایوان دیس از علی بورگی فرام هلو هالیوود ام هیر تو تاک اباوت دی ایرانیان امریکن مووی پروداکشنز وی ار لاکی تو بی ات دی پی بی اس استودیو مستر راجرز هو اینیشیتد دی ایده اف پروڈیوسینگ دی ایرانیان امریکن داکیومنتری I think it was sort of a collaborative. There was a lot of events that came together, and our board chair, uh, Dr. Joellen Chatham, uh, has a lot of friends in the Iranian community, so she was very aware of these issues. So she was making sure that we were sensitive to a lot of things that were going on, and uh, including that uh, show that was done by Rick Steves, all about Iran, and uh, the uh, wonderful reception that uh, that show had on public television. So uh, when the idea was proposed that there be a show about uh, Iranian Americans, the Iranian immigrant experience in America, and what life was like for them now, it seemed like a very logical thing to do. Two things happened several years ago about the same time. Uh, one is that Rick Steves, who is a uh, movie producer who basically does documentaries that are considered travelogues, he usually does it about Europe and the wine country and so on, uh, went out of his comfort zone and he did one on Iran. It wasn't about politics, it wasn't about religion, it was all about the people and the culture. About the same time, pollster John Zogby had done a poll for PAIA, the Public Affairs Alliance of Iranian Americans. Mm -hmm. And that poll showed that 80% of Americans had never met an Iranian American. 20% had, and of that 20%, 92% liked Iranian Americans. But that sounds good, but when you realize that 80% of Americans had never met an Iranian American, that's concerning because the only information they would get about Iran or Iranian Americans would be from the news, and it would be about a government that most people in this country, including most Iranian Americans, don't appreciate very much because of human rights and so many other reasons. So we decided here at PBS SoCal to show the Rick Steves travel log on Iran, but use it as a pledge drive, not only to raise money for our station, but to introduce our audience, which is about 19 million people in Southern California, to the Iranian American community. And so we brought onto the station some top Iranian leaders in Southern California, Farhad Mohit, you know Farhad? Yes. Um, Bijan Kian, who's a very mm -hmm. good friend of mine. Uh, we brought in Farhad Meshkat from New York. And, um, and, and several others, including Firuz Naderi. Oh, okay. Firuz yeah, was yeah. just wonderful, you know, who headed the NASA program. Sure. And we, during the pledge breaks, we didn't just ask our viewers for money. We did that, of course, because that's what pledge is all about. But we also interviewed these and other people from Iran about their role in the United States, what they're doing here since they left after the revolution, and the great contributions that they're making to America's society, and Southern California in particular. It was so successful, not only financially, but more importantly, in educating the community about the Amer Iranian American community, and also bringing that community into our PBS family. Uh, public television has done a number of these projects with various groups of, of Americans and no one had really taken a look at the Iranian American experience and so that was something we felt needed to be done. Our station president Mill Rogers contacted Andrew Goldberg who had done documentaries like this before on Armenians. He had done Armenian genocide, he had done a wonderful documentary on the survival of the Jews. So we brought in an uh, Emmy Award winning documentarian 
And he did the uh, program that will air on PBS across the country on December 18th. Their story begins more than two millennia ago in the Middle East, in a land that would come to be called Persia. Beginning as a group of nomads, in time unified by a common language, the people of Persia, led by such great kings as Cyrus and Darius, would build an empire that at its peak stretched from North Africa to India, from the Caspian to the Red Sea. A people of diverse ethnicities and faiths, they developed rich traditions that have endured centuries of migrations and conquests. In the second half of the 20th century, their nation, now known as Iran, was racked by political and religious upheaval and ultimately revolution. From this, tens of thousands of Iranians left their homeland for the United States, a country they would come to call home. What criteria did you use for choosing the people for interviewing? I didn't for, choose anyone. That was up to the producer, Andrew Goldberg. One of the things that um, you should know about PBS, and any producer who produces for PBS will tell you this, is that PBS is famous for not participating in decisions like criteria on who's interviewed. Um, we leave that up to the producer and the story he or she needs to tell. And so the producer chooses who to select based on the story that's being told and the direction he or she is going with the documentary. So I didn't choose anybody. Uh, I don't know what criteria the producer used except that here's a story to tell and these are the people that can help me tell it. We met with uh, the leadership of Paya. We also met with some folks at Farhang Foundation. Mm -hmm. And um, Andrew just got to know a number of people in the community. He interviewed approximately 25 people. Frankly, he could have chosen from thousands of people who were worthy of being interviewed. Um, but a producer has to make choices. You can only get so much into one hour. And so those decisions uh, are decisions that Andrew made based upon the storyline that he was trying to tell about the immigrant experience. The political convulsions in Iran continue, and the government appointed by the Shah apparently has been toppled. How politics influenced in making a decision for producing this movie? Had nothing to do with it. Andrew Goldberg has uh, done programs like this before on immigrant communities to the United States. And again, we, we weren't asking people their political opinions, how they feel about Ahmadinejad or anything like that. It was, what is it like being an American? What is it like being an Iranian American? And there are parts of the documentary that are humorous. Uh, Maz Jobrani is, oh, okay. uh, yeah, Maz sure. is interviewed. Um, Firuz Naderi coming mm -hmm. here and is now a major icon, not just in the Iranian community, but in the scientific community. Um, and then just some ordinary people. It's about their experience. We didn't ask in their politics. I can't think of uh, a less political show than this one or a less political decision-making process than this one. Uh, there was no politics discussed ever. You know, one of the things that uh, is important to remember by all of those who watch this program is that even though in many respects this program was done uh, for the Iranian community. It was really more done for non-Iranians to understand the Iranian community. And, and that was really important, I think. And so the project had to be one that the Iranian community was enthusiastic about and participated in, but is also done in a way that will enable other Americans who are not Iranian Americans to understand and compare and contrast the things that the Iranian community is introducing to our culture. And uh, I think the show does that very well. A lot of our families left. They left. They left one after another. They left the country. They just left their houses, their everything. They packed their clothes. They bought a, a ticket and they left. I left all my books in my office, my apartment, the car parked in the front, everything that would have given the perception that I'm leaving for a couple of weeks and coming back. And, um, and I left, and uh, that was the end of that. 
Do you think the upcoming presidential elections in Iran had any effect in producing this documentary? Absolutely not. This documentary is not about politics in Iran or politics here, uh, or religion, or anything sectarian or political. It's about the experience of the Iranian American. Um, Iranian Americans have been coming to the United States for a long time, you know, to study and to do business. Sure. But obviously, the revolution forced many to leave under very different circumstances. And because so few Americans knew anything about Iranian Americans, we wanted to introduce the general population to this newest immigrant community, which is very affluent, very successful, very educated, and making a great contribution. So it's all about that. It has nothing to do with politics. We wanted, we wanted Americans to understand the, the experience of what it was like to leave Iran under difficult circumstances. Many people left everything behind to come here, perhaps not speaking the language, not knowing how they were going to make a living, getting used to whole new cultural things like Christmas and Thanksgiving, um, New Year instead of March is in January. Um, we wanted people to understand what it was like for these people to come here and, and begin making a contribution. The most popular place in Tehran at the moment is the airport. The Iranians and foreigners are trying to leave. I missed everything, every little thing you, t you can think of. Most of all, my family. At the beginning, it was my mother, my sister, my brother, my neighbor, the garbage man who picked up my garbage. I really want to go back to Iran. I want to be in the, in the cargo of the plane, just put me someplace and take me back to my country. Why do you think the Iranian American community is so important for the American media? Because one, they're making a great contribution. Um, you, know, you will find them in uh, very important places in, in now in government. Mm -hmm. uh, Bishan Kian as you know, the highest ranking uh, person in politics in the country, reporting directly to the President of the United States until he, uh, his term ended a few months ago. Um, you know, the, in the banking industry, in the educational industry, they're now opening an Iranian American Studies Center at USC. They're making great contributions. And for those who, there were professors, I've met professors of chemistry in Iran, but when they came here, they couldn't teach in the university because they didn't have American credentials, they couldn't speak English. Mm -hmm. So maybe they're driving a cab, but they're making sure their children become engineers and doctors. Sure. Um, it's just a, a community that has so much to offer, and they're doing that. We wanted people to know that. People started to come to terms with the fact that I think we're here to stay. We need to start celebrating Thanksgiving, even though we don't know what to do with this cranberry sauce. But now I have a three-year-old grandchild who's an American. What kind of people were interviewed in this uh, movie production? Were doctors interviewed? Uh, you know what, I'd have to go back. Um, I know it was a cross-section. Okay. Um, uh, I mentioned Firuz Naderi was interviewed. Any artists, the, singers? Yes, there, there was artists. Maz Jobrani, of course, mm -hmm. is, um, is a comedian and a, and a media person. He was interviewed. There were several authors that were interviewed, authors, and then yeah. just some ordinary families. Mm -hmm. Goli Ameri, are you familiar with Goli Ameri? Yes, yeah. Yes, so it's a cross section of people. Any TV hosts, radio hosts? Mm, I don't think directors, so. Directors, actors. Think so. Okay. Many successful Iranians, as well as families, homemakers, housewives, uh, uh, people from all walks of life. Be more PBS.